15th and 16th century knights in full plate armour did sometimes use shields. Hi folks, Matt Eason here, Scholar Gladiatorius. So this is a common misconception, the idea that shields were commonly used by knights, aka men-at-arms, all the way through until the late 14th century and then they fell out of use due to plate armour. And this simply isn't correct. Now it is true to say that shields became less common for the fully armoured man, for knights. In fact, a lot of them weren't knighted, they were men-at-arms technically, but let's call them knights in this video because it's easier. Um, and it is true, as I say, to say that they did become less common. And one of the reasons, of course, is when you're play wearing full plate harness, there isn't so much need for a shield, and therefore it frees up both of your hands to use weapons like uh, two-handed spears and uh, pole axes and glaives and things like this. Moreover, a fully armoured opponent, if that's who you're going to be fighting against in armour, is very difficult to overcome. And one of the ways of overcoming them is to stab into gaps. Another way to overcome them is, is grappling. Uh, and another way of overcoming them is using a really big, powerful two-handed weapon. And all of those things are made easier by not having a shield. If you're gonna grapple, it's easier to do without a shield. If you're gonna get in, for example, half sorting, if I just grab a uh, long sword from over here, or a feather, if you're gonna be half sorting, clearly that's easier done two-handed, although it should be mentioned, you can do that with a shield as well, and you can certainly sling the shield, or you can even keep the shield on your arm, so it can be done half sorting um, with a shield. Um, and of course, using a big, heavy two-handed weapon like the pole axe behind me is a lot easier without a shield. But the misconception is that shields went completely out of use. Now in previous videos I have pointed out that shields remained in use for lighter armoured soldiers. So we absolutely know shields stayed in use for people like archers, usually small bucklers, and we'll talk about the different types of shields in a second. Also people like um, uh, spearmen and halberdiers and people like this, um, crossbowmen, they did carry shields because they had less armour um, and they were fighting in a different kind of role. However, the misconception is that knights or men-at-arms didn't use shields in this period. And the fact is, they did. If we look at the manuscripts, if we look at things like Froissart's Chronicles, or any of the other famous manuscripts of the 15th century, we actually sh see shields being carried by all sorts of men-at-arms and knights, people in full plate harness. You even see famous paintings of saints, people like St. George and St. Michael, in full plate harness, with a long sword in one hand, or bastard sword, and a shield as well. So the fact is that absolutely, um, shields were used by fully armoured people in this time. Now these shields did evolve. They weren't the simple heater shield. Sometimes you see those, but they weren't the simple heater shield that you necessarily see in the 14th century. By the 15th century, we see various new funky types of shapes. Now that's a very in-depth topic and I'm not gonna go in depth into this, but merely to say that the heater shield did evolve. You'll notice the one that I've got here, which has got the Yorkist Sun in Splendor. I'll be uh, carrying this at uh, Tewkesbury this weekend has a boss on it. Now, <clears throat> interestingly, some of these, we don't exactly know why bosses were added to heater shields in the 15th century, but you see it in loads of art. The other type of heater shield you see in a lot of 15th century art is sometimes known as a, a targe or a target, which means a later thing in the six, means a different thing in the 16th century, but in this period, it means a sort of cr uh, kind of corrugated shield. And this was often used in jousting, most famously, but it was used on foot as well. So the heater shield evolved. We don't know exactly why bosses started to get re-added, but there seems to be a sudden resurgence of the presence of bosses on shields in the 15th century, perhaps just to reinforce them and make them stronger. But an interesting thing I've noticed, so whilst I'm using a strap shield here, some of these boss, sh uh, boss, um, boss shields become boss gripped as well. Now, one thing I've noticed is wearing my armor and wearing gauntlets, a strap shield is quite fiddly to get on and off, whereas a boss gripped shield with a gauntlet you can just, and it's usually quite a big boss, bigger than you'd find on an earlier, like a Viking era shield. You can jam your gauntlet in there and still have a good grip on it and use it a bit like a giant buckler. But they did also have strap shields and strap shields are still shown and straps are sometimes accompanied with a boss. So a boss doesn't always mean it's boss gripped, but it does sometimes mean that. So just briefly to mention the three main types of shield in use in the 15th and 16th centuries used by fully armoured people that might be a surprise to you. Um, post below, incidentally, is this a surprise? Is this something new to you or did you know this already? 
So first of all, heater shields in their revolved form, sometimes with bosses, sometimes funky shapes, sometimes with cutouts for a lance or other pole arm. Um, so for evolved forms of heater shield remain in use into the 15th and 16th centuries. The next type is the pavis. This is in role-playing games known as a tower shield. Very tall, big, however there are smaller versions. So you can get something that's known as a hand pavis, which is used more like a big buckler or um, a targa. Um, so pavises are essentially rectangular and come in a variety of shapes and slightly different sizes and curvatures and things like this and details. And some of them have a spike on the bottom as well. And finally there is the buckler, the little hand shield here. And the great thing about these, these were carried in civilian life because they can easily be worn hung off the sword belt. They were also used by people like archers who couldn't carry a big shield and uh, need to be able to obviously operate their bows. Also people like gunners and you know other more likely equipped soldiers so it's a really good backup and augments the sword and sword and shield is a really formidable combination and importantly the people carrying sword and shield in warfare like archers and billmen and people like this they were acquainted with the use of sword and buckler from civilian self-defense. It was a common civilian everyday carry, so it was essentially their weapon that they were used to brawling and dueling with. So, those are the three principal types. There are other types as well. Um, one of the famous ones as we get more into the 16th century, but it was present in the 15th century, is the so-called rotella, sometimes known as a rondash, incorrectly, um, which is essentially a round shield. This is particular to Italy, but it did spread and was also popular in Spain as well, so more southern in Europe. Um, so there were other types of shields. Maybe I'll look at all of the types of 15th and 16th century shields in a future video. But for now, I hope the idea that uh, heater shields disappeared from use for knights in the 15th century has been busted. And uh, there are plenty of examples out there if you look for them. Cheers for watching, folks, and I hope I'll see you again soon back on the channel. Cheers. Thanks for watching. We've got extra videos on Patreon. Please give our Facebook a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Cheers, folks.